What's up, y'all? TYT Sports. What's today? TYT. Oh, what? I missed it. <laughs> was, was I not supposed to say TYT? <laughs> now you can say whatever you want. Oh. Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, you didn't know what day it was. I didn't. Oh, no, I'm Rick. Man. That is Robert Latal, mm-hmm. CEO of Black Sports Online. Before we jump into Jason Whitlock not knowing anything about anything, <laughs> uh, remember that we are going to be live streaming every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11.30 a.m. at youtube.com slash TYT Sports. We will be taking all of your questions and just showing you a thing or two about the other side of sports media. Okay, we jump into this. Jason Whitlock, probably the last person I want commenting on Serena Williams, yet he did it. And here's part one of many of what he had to say. She had, again, to me, this is Draymond Green. This is Charles Barkley. This is a player that's a bit too emotional. And, 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 and I just want to be clear here in terms of, of there's plenty of players. Nadal, from McEnroe to everybody, they've all been, if you're an emotional player, these umpires get after you. It's not just a man thing. And so... I sometimes think we overlook incompetence and go straight to personal attack. Mm. Oh, my God, that person wasn't incompetent. They attacked me because I'm a woman or because I'm black or because I'm Latino. Sometimes it's just incompetence. When I hear that, and we're going to get into more in a second, he's basically saying that she's playing the victim card. Correct. Right? Correct. I would I would say or overreacting by immediately going to race right. as sexism. Yes, correct. So Jason Whitlock then continues on. Take a look. I'll say this: Serena is arguing that she's fighting for women's rights, and that part of her stance here is so that women get treated like men. What are we really fighting for? Are, are we fighting? so that we can make all the mistakes and do all the bad things others do? And if that's the case, is that really a fight worth having? And so Martina's point was like, it's it's like when your kids get in trouble and they say, well, Jimmy and them, they smoke weed. You just caught me with a beer. And it's the point all over to every other kid and blah, 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 every other kid's doing this. That's something that you're supposed to grow out of by the time you're in your late 30s. See, this is where we start to not split hairs, Mm -hmm. but have a clear divide. Yes. He referenced tattletaling. Yes. This is a huge problem that regardless of race, women as a whole Mm -hmm. have had to fight for. Mm -hmm. I have seen Roger Federer yell at a chair umpire, don't you effing talk to me. I have seen Rafa Nadal go back and forth. Every highlight we see of John McEnroe and why he's propelled to the status is not only did he win, Mm -hmm. But he also was vicious with chair umpires when he would say, that was on the line, answer my question. Like he would yell and scream at these chair umpires. And yet Serena calls this one chair umpire a thief and she gets penalized, not only a point because of the coaching that went on, but then an entire game. The the question really is, if you just boil down to it, is in this particular instance, if Serena was a man, if she was a Serena Williams. Okay. Would the umpire, as accomplished? Yes. Okay. Just, just if, it, if it was just a man, and this was a say, this was a men's U.S. Open final. Say it was Nadal and Federer, or, okay, or yep. Djokovic. Yeah, yeah. And the exact so an accomplished right, player. And the yes. exact same three incidents happened. How confident are we that that judge would have done, or that umpire would have done the exact same thing? Now, when you're that they did, just, that that they did, did to Serena, Serena to no, think. it wouldn't happen. Right. No. So when you're the problem is what Jason Whitlock is saying is I get conceptually what he's trying to say. Don't jump to the conclusion. Don't don't just say well he did it, so I should be able to do it. The the, the real problem is this is when you're in a society that always jumps to conclusions about you. It's very difficult to all of a sudden give other people the benefit of the doubt. Mm. You jump to conclusions to me about my race, my gender. Uh, my sexual orientation. Now, all of a sudden, when someone does something to me, it's, well, let's see, you know, let's not jump to conclusions right. about why this is. Let's just assume that they did the right thing or they would have done the same thing. We don't know that, though. Right. We don't know that. But again, my main problem is, and I think he lives in a bubble somewhat, or at least he's putting out that sort of perception of the place that he lives mentally, is that, well, 
The men get away with it, but they shouldn't be able to get away with it. And the women don't get away with it, but they shouldn't tattletale about the men mm. getting away with it. It's so much more than that. That, that is such a small-minded mm. way of thinking about all of this. And yet, we continue with more of Jason Whitlock. This whole thing of, oh, well, McEnroe and Jimmy Connors and this guy and that guy did it. And, and so I'm not, and this is where I get crossways with a lot of people about my point of view. And, and this will be a harsh statement. I'm not fighting to do the bad things white guys do. That's not my fight in life. I, I'm actually fighting to represent my family and the people I care about and to represent, quite honestly, God in a way that brings honor to my family and the church that I grew up in. All right, I'm glad that he brings that up. It's great. It's sort of like when... Uh, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions has to quote the Bible on why <laughs> illegal immigrants, aliens, are coming into this country. So here's what Jason Whitlock wrote in 2009 for those that did not see our clip last week. There's an inescapable truth about Serena. She's an underachiever. Unfortunately for us, she lacks the courage to fulfill her destiny. She'd rather eat, half-ass her way through non-major tournaments, and complain she's not getting the respect her 11 major championships resume demands. That's when she won 11, of course. She complains about being ranked number two in the world when she's not bitching on Twitter on her blog about new rules that forbid Wimbledon players from eating in the locker room. Seriously, how else can Serena fill out her size 16 shorts without grazing at her stall between matches? God gave Serena everything, including drop-dead looks. She's chosen to smother some of it in an unsightly layer of thick, muscled blubber, a byproduct of her unwillingness to commit to a training regimen and diet that would have her at the top of her game year-round. And then this is where it gets great about God and bringing you know, honor mm -hmm. to your family. BBWs, big booty women, do not write me angry emails. I'm only knocking Serena's backpack because it's preventing her from reaching her full potential as an athletic icon. I'm not fundamentally opposed to junk in the trunk, although my preference is a stuffed onion over an oozing pumpkin. Couldn't get away with that in 2018. He'd be fired in 30, it lasted 24 hours. Would he though? Because like Phil Mushnick nah, is still with the Post. Nah. And he wrote all that stuff about Jay-Z. Yeah, but that that's that's a rapper. There's no, and, and today, the, the Me Too and all of that, there's no mm. way that flies in 2018. But funny enough, mm. it just it's just odd that a fat man is talking about another woman eating, you know, too much and grazing at the stalls mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, he's, he's been grazing a lot. I'm sure he's eating pretty a lot at, at the FS1 uh, studios. But to his one point, though, about I'm not trying to do the same thing, the bad things that white people do and get away with it. I think the difference, I think the part that he's missing that's going flying over his head, it's not about doing the same bad things and wanting to get away with it. Right. It's, it's about right. if, I, if I just happen to do the same thing that I'm treated... Fairly. And, you know, I'm just going to use this example. You and I are in a car, right? Uh, well, let's say we're in two different cars, right? And we both get pulled over. Mm -hmm. And we both have a little weed in the car, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Can I be comfortable in that I'm going to be treated the same by the police that you will be? Honestly, I'm not. And, you know, even though we both did the same thing. No, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, look, not to, not to cut yeah. you off here, but, like, you could have already stopped at, we're both in separate cars. Right. And I would have been like, no, this is already it's, it's, it's unfair. Already different. Right. Yeah. So it's not about not wanting to be punished for doing bad things. I mean, we both got caught with the right. weed. We both were speeding or whatever. Right. You know, am I going to get the same treatment? And that's what Serena and others are saying. They're not saying, hey, I just want to do bad stuff and get away with it. Right. I just exactly. said, if I do the same things, whatever it is, good, bad, or ugly, mm -hmm. then I'm treated exactly the same as the men, as a white person, as anybody. Totally. And I think everybody in the world should want that. You should want equal treatment for whatever you do, mm -hmm. good, bad, or other. If, if I perform better or equal to you, I would want to get the same type of praise for that. I don't want, you know, you should, I shouldn't get Agreed. more praise or you should get more praise to be equal praise. So it's Agreed. not about bad, good, or whatever. It's mm -hmm. about equality. More from Jason Whitlock. We want to turn Serena into this victim. All the time, her whole narrative oh, is God. framed in victimhood. She and made oh my more God. than every NFL player not named Peyton Manning last year in endorsements. I understand. I understand that, and so we want to do this victim narr narrative that Serena, I don't even think, really believes in. There are no champions that see themselves as a victim first. See, this is also where 
what he said about LeBron rings true, is that now he says no champion can be a victim, no rich black person mm -hmm. can experience racism. He doesn't believe in anyone mm -hmm. having to go through something, and maybe it's just the term victim that mm -hmm. threw me off, but in his eyes, being the anti-black black black guy on Fox News Corp, mm -hmm. who by the way, at one time wrote about Colin Kaepernick, graphic A, while Brooklyn Dodgers owner Branch Rickey strategically chose Jackie Robinson to break baseball's color barrier, Mr. Kaepernick's protest came seemingly out of nowhere before the 2016 season. The mixed race quarterback, who'd been adopted by a suburban white family, was known mainly for his chiseled abs, tattooed body, and a touchdown celebration involving him kissing biceps. He then also went on to say this, there's a reason I call them the black KKK. The pain, the fear, and the destruction are all the same. Someone who loves Sean Taylor is crying right now. The black KKK claimed another victim, a high pro, uh, profile professional football player with a checkered pass this time. This is the sort of stuff that we are dealing with when we talk about Jason Whitlock. He is the anti uh, rights guy. He thinks that a person like Serena Williams or LeBron James cannot go through adversity and just use a label that is to be used when someone is oppressed or put down. That is called victimness. So again, considering that this man continues to collect a check from Fox News Corp, it would not surprise me if he opened up for Tucker Carlson in the next five years because this is simply what he does. Well, I, I've said this before. If you're a black person that is willing uh, to go on TV, radio, whatever it is, print, and talk bad about black people, there'll always be a job for you. Because What's the dude's name on CNN? Oh, I know what you're talking Paris about. Paris something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. that guy. He's that guy. Can someone help me? Paris right. something. He's because that guy. The reason why is simple, because a lot of times what the white people want to say on these shows, they can't, because they know if they actually verbalized it and <laughs> said it, <laughs> then they would get fired, mm -hmm. you know, for good reasons. But if you get a black guy to say it, then all you gotta do is be like, and I'm not saying Colin Cowherd is, you know, racist or anything like that, say, but did you see how I just kind of, mm hmm yeah, she made more money than, they could co-sign this narrative, whatever right. the narr narrative they wanna put on there. Isn't that the agenda, though? Yeah, that is yeah, the agenda. That's now, the agenda, they don't want him yeah. to put up a fight. Yeah, Jason Whitlock wasn't always like this. Uh, some of his dealings with ESPN, I think, turned him that way. Oh, completely, uh, yes. But, you know, the-, the well, Also a check. Right. But if, yeah, but the thing about it is, if you ask people in, in media, you know, would you hang out, would you trust, would you, what do you think about Jason Whitlock? You're not mm -hmm. gonna get a lot of positive things. So if his, if his goal is to, you know, make his church, you know, see him in a great light, mm -hmm. well, how does your church feel that you feel like, you know, you're the token, you know, Negro that is, you know, shucking and jiving on TV against black people all the mm -hmm. time? Should the church feel good about that? I'm sure they do. <laughs> Well, Jason Whitlock would continue, and he mm. will continue. Let me set this up real quick. Jason Whitlock said that there is a conspiracy behind tennis, Serena Williams, and her father, Richard. Take a look. This was when he was at, with ESPN and pardon the interruption. Plus, she's playing her sister next. I think Richard will make the call on that. She'll get a cakewalk. Mm. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Like, I, I understand... And by the way, at that time, I'm pretty sure Venus won more mm -hmm. at the time Early that that, that, time, that was yeah. released. Early in their career, yes. To say that Richard, their father, is dictating who wins when mm -hmm. is ridiculous and asinine, ill-informed, uh, misinterpreting everything that we follow with sports. And to use them as a prop for your own agenda is flat out awful. I'm glad we brought that up. It's flat out awful. All right, so let us know your thoughts. Jason Whitlock continues to clown himself, and it does so mainly with Serena Williams and LeBron James. If you made it to the end of this video, mazel tov. If you want to see more, hit the bell and hit subscribe. Why don't you?